How do you make fins that have a metallic appearance like this one right here? That's what I'm going to show you in this video. Welcome to Advanced Construction Videos, where we show you how to tackle rocketry, building techniques, and more. On our website, we sell kits, motors, building supplies, and electronics. So come and learn, shop, build, and fly when you visit us at ApogeeRockets.com. Hi, I'm Tim Van Milligan from Apogee Components. Um, I've been experimenting with making metallic looking fins um, like this one right here. Um, this is a two-stage rocket. This is called the Midge. Um, it's one of our competition kits and I decided to uh, put a metallic finish on it. Um, one, it uh, makes the surface nice and smooth and two, it adds a lot of visibility. Um, so that's why I did it for this particular rocket, but you might want to do it for, you know, any rocket. Um, and this is applied to balsa wood, which makes the fin extremely light. And that was my purpose. I wanted to make the rocket lightweight. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to take a piece of a sheet of balsa wood like this, and we're going to put the metallic finish on it. Um, and then you can cut the fins out and then glue them onto your rocket. Um, the downside of this is you can't airfoil the rockets like, um, like you normally would, you know, with a, um, a, um, a, a razor sharp trailing edge. You're not going to be able to do this because the, the metallic foil doesn't, um, won't go around a compound curve. Um, it has to be on a flat or just a simple curve, like a, a simple curve would be kind of just like a body tube where it has one curvature direction. Um, this would be a compound curve. It curves this way and around the, the uh, perimeter. Um, so the foil doesn't do that. And you're going to need some special equipment. Um, so this is a little bit more involved. This is, you know, we would classify this as a skill level five technique because you're going to be doing a lot of outside work. Um, you're going to need some special equipment, like I said. Um, the metallic foil is this stuff right here. Um, and this you can buy on Amazon or other websites, and it's called Toner Reactive Foil. Um, this is a purple, but um, you can get it in almost any color that you want. Um, you know, you got a red and a silver and a blue, green copper colored and gold colored um, and they all work great um, uh, the the toner reactive foil what it's made for is uh, in the um, greeting card industry you ever get a greeting card and it has lettering on that on the card and it's got a shiny appearance um, that's this stuff right here uh, and what it's made to do is um, on the back side uh, this right here uh, is is applied to a plastic film and this what happens is um, You put this on a piece of paper that has toner So you run it through your laser printer at home and it picks up the toner and then you put this on top of it and Then you heat it up. So you just run it through like a laminating machine that reheats it and it, what it does is it melts the toner because toner used on paper is actually a plastic. Um, so it remelts that plastic and then this sticks to that toner. Um, and then you just peel it up and it leaves behind that metallic finish. Um, what I discovered is you don't have to use it with toner. You can use it with almost any adhesive. Um, let me, uh, I'm going to try something here. I'm going <laughs> to... I'm going to cut a piece off and what I'm going to do is, uh, is I got a piece of cardboard here and I got some just some spray adhesive and I'm just going to spray lightly here and I'm just going to tack down the reactive foil just so that it doesn't because you can see it, it wants to blow away so we're going to use the spray adhesive just to tack it down. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to spray adhesive on there. Um, so this side has the uh, adhesive, this side doesn't. And I'm going to pick this up. And as an experiment, I'm going to, let's see, it's, it's very, it wants to curl on itself. <laughs> but it's working. Um, see, then you press it down 
Um, and then when you lift it up, it leaves that foil back behind, and then the, the plastic is right here. Um, this peels right off. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to apply this to a balsa wood surface. Now the problem with balsa wood is that it is, it's bumpy. We're going to sand this smooth to try to eliminate some of those ridges because these, the wood grain is, it's hard and soft wood and it's all mixed together. Like the dark part on the wood is a little harder than the lighter color. Um, and that's going to show on your final piece. And we don't want that. We want it nice and smooth so that it's, it's a lot more reflective. Um, um, you, you'll see the grain if it's there. Um, so we want to try to fill it. And we're going to do two things to fill it. First, we're going to sand it. And then second, we're going to put on top, um, this is carbon fiber veil. So you could also use fiberglass cloth. Um, I like, I prefer the carbon fiber veil uh, because fiberglass cloth is really hard to work with. You can see that it distorts its shape really easy and you can get runs in it. Um, and it's just a nightmare to handle for me. So I've switched from, from fiberglass cloth to carbon fiber veil. Um, so it's, it's, it's carbon fiber. So it's individual strands of fiber that are chopped up and then scattered loosely and then pressed down. And you get this veil like here. And what amazes me is how strong it is. So I could, I could just pick it up and you can see it's not, you know, it's, it's barely drooping um, where the, the fiberglass cloth that I just put down you just would just flop all over. So this stuff has incredible stiffness already. So when we put this on the balsa wood, it's going to add a lot of strength to the balsa wood at the same time that it's going to give it a nice smooth surface. Um, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to start with uh, the carbon fiber veil, um, a piece of balsa wood. We're going to need two pieces of carbon fiber because we're going to do both sides. And we're going to do them both at the same time. So you just need to cut your carbon fiber um, just a little bit larger than your balsa wood. Um, so that's one piece. You know, anything extra we'll trim off later. We don't have to worry about it. Okay, so that's both pieces. Um, then you're gonna need your um, toner reactive foil like this stuff here. Now uh, this stuff, this, all this stuff you can buy online. Um, Amazon does carry it, although they are a little bit more expensive than if you shopped around. Um, we don't sell this, but um, I bought a big roll and, of this purple and I'm gonna be using purple forever. <laughs> uh, but you can also get it in different colors. Like I said, you got silvers and reds and blues and greens. Um, next, what we wanna do is we're gonna take um, a piece of cardboard and like I did before I just want to spray it real lightly with adhesive and you want to do this outdoors because you don't want to be breathing this adhesive um, and we're just going to tack everything down to the cardboard um, so that it doesn't move okay and including our toner reactor foil and you're going to need two strips Where's my other strip? There's my other strip. Just like this. And just tack it down um, because we're going to put adhesive on it, but not this adhesive. We're going to use epoxy. And so we're going to make a sandwich of the toner reactive foil, a layer of carbon fiber veil, the balsa wood, another layer of carbon fiber veil, and then another layer of the toner reactive foil. Um, and then we're going to smash it all together and let the epoxy harden. But we're going to apply the epoxy in a way that you've never done before. So I'm going to pause here. I'm going to get my sanding tee so that I can sand my balsa wood smooth because that's the next step. 
Okay, I'm back. Uh, I got my sanding tee and I've got some 320 grit sandpaper. You can also use 400 grit sandpaper. Um, the next tool that you're going to need is a sheet of glass. And actually, you're going to need two sheets of glass. Um, you can get glass, again, you can get it on Amazon. That's probably the cheapest place you'll find it. Just look for glass cutting boards. Um, they're cheaper that way. If you go to a glass store like I did, you pay to like three times as much. So just get it cheap. Um, the reason we want glass is because we're going, this is going to give us the smooth surface. And the smoother the surface, the better the finished product is going to look like. Um, so you're going to need two sheets of glass. Um, the other thing is when you're sanding balsa wood, just like a whole sheet and you want it nice and smooth and flat, if you want it flat, start out on a flat surface like a sheet of glass. So I'm just going to lightly sand the surface of the wood to uh, try to make it as uniform as possible before I start the process of building this up. Okay, um, it's sanded. Um, and now I'm gonna lightly wipe the surface. I just got some alcohol here. Um, and this is just to pick up the dust. I uh, just wanna get rid of that dust that was on that surface. I uh, see so you picked some up. And the alcohol will evaporate really quick, which is what we're gonna need. Okay, now, we're going to start mix, mixing up our epoxy. Um, and I'm going to use a liquid epoxy. Um, you want something very thin uh, because we, we're going, to, the way that we're going to apply this, we're going to apply it in a way that you've never done before. And that is to spray it onto the, the surfaces. We're going to use an airbrush. So you're going to need an airbrush. Um, find the cheapest airbrush you can. Um, it doesn't need to be a fancy one. Um, it's, you're going to be firing epoxy through it. So over time, it's going to gunk it up. You can, it can be cleaned out. And I've, you know, I use uh, alcohol to clean it out. Um, so they, it will last a long time. Um, but you don't need an expensive one. Just start with something cheap and simple. Um, so I've got my resin in here. Uh, this epoxy is a five to one mix. So it's five parts of the resin and uh, one part of the hardener. Um, so I'm just going to put that in there until I get to 0.5 grams. I don't need a lot of epoxy. Okay. All right, so I got my epoxy and I'm gonna mix it up. And usually I use my scale as a timer. So when the light goes off, I'm done mixing. So it's about a minute. So uh, we're gonna pause here while I'm mixing so I get a good mix and then we'll come right back. Okay, I'm back. Um, now we're gonna thin the epoxy out because it's still too thick. We're never gonna be able to spray this out of an air gun um, because it's too thick. So. Uh, to thin it out, I'm going to use, um, again, I'm going to use rubbing alcohol. Uh, this is 91%, so it's a good high-strength alcohol. Um, so I mixed up three grams of epoxy, so I'm going to put in three grams of alcohol into my mix uh, because that's what I've found works pretty good is a 50-50 mix. All right, and then we'll just mix this up again as well. Um, now, after I got it mixed up, uh, we're gonna take this and we're gonna spray it onto the, um, we're gonna spray both sides of the wood and then all those pieces that we attach to the piece of cardboard. Um, and then 
this side only gets one spray, uh, but the carbon fiber veil, we're going to spray both sides. So we're going to spray it, lift it up, flip it over, spray it again so that we get um, epoxy on both sides. And the reason we spray it on is because it's a lot more uniform. If it's um, if you try to just paint it on with a brush or, you know, a foam brush or something like that, it's going to, well, one, you're going to mess up the reactive foil because that stuff, um, the backside where the foil is, is very fragile. Um, you can take your fingernail and you can scratch it easily. So if you try to paint it on, you're probably going to scratch it and leave spots on your fin that don't have that metal on it. Um, and then second, you're going to, it's because it's, um, if you try to paint it on, you're going to leave bumps like ridges and those are going to show up. Um, they don't flatten out as easily as you think they might. Um, I've, I've never been able to get a nice uniform coat unless I've sprayed it on. Um, so at this point, I've got it. Uh, all mixed up and we're going to go outside and we're going to spray this on the parts and then we'll come back here and assemble everything. <laughs>